Mexico City is the fifth largest city in the world, with a population of around approximately 22 million, which classifies it as a mega city. It is situated in the central Mexican plateau at 2,240 meters in elevation. Mexico City is also sinking at a rate of about 10 inches per year. This is because the entire metropolis is built on top of a lake bed, and the city pumps draw water from it. The ground below is sandy and unstable which amplifies even small earthquakes by as much as 500%, and all these factors have caused problems in the last decades with regards to the urban infrastructure, water management, and waste disposal. Mexico City is the second biggest producer of waste amongst the world's megacities. More than half of this waste is produced at home, which is collected by 2,400 diesel power garbage trucks, and approximately 90% of all the trash ends up in the landfill, which emits methane, a potent greenhouse gas, accounting for 10% of global emissions, and it is severely impacting the health of the people and the environment. However, in recent years, the local people of Mexico City have been turning this around. In this video, we will show you how an abandoned trash pit has been turned into a green waste management system using an innovative Mexican technology that reduces CO2 emissions in the recycling process as well as creating a green oasis in the city with social and educational spaces for the community. So stick with us as we dive into today's video. Mexico City might seem like one of the worst geographically designed cities in the world, but it wasn't always like this. This mega city has an ancient history Founded by the Aztecs in 1325 AD, the city grew to a population of roughly 300,000 people, and it was known as Tenochtitlan. It became one of the most important metropolises on the planet, since it was the largest, wealthiest, and most populated city on Earth, considered a megacity for its time. What is even more incredible is that the ancient Aztec city was a completely zero-waste society. They developed a resource-efficient culture with a highly productive agricultural system that recycled nutrients from their waste products. The Aztecs did this by expanding the Chinampas, or artificial islands, which were the invention of several indigenous tribes related to the Tolteca, who had already been living around the lakes since 100 AD. The Chinampas were made with fertile sediment from the bottom of the lakes. Not only did it provide all the food needed to sustain the booming Aztec population, but it was also used for waste disposal management. Food leftovers and agricultural residues were used to fertilize the crops, or disposed with inside the chinampas. And the most valuable fertilizer used on the chinampas was human excrement. Urine was used as a fixative in dyeing of fabrics. The Aztecs demonstrate that a society can build a strong economy by making an efficient use of resources and not wasting anything. Unfortunately, after the Spaniards defeated the Aztec military in 1521 AD, they dismantled the waste management system, drained the lakes, and built Mexico City over the lake bed. Mexico City's population has been growing exponentially in the last century. As a result, water and waste management has been in a crisis, along with the challenges of feeding a growing population. In the district of Roma Sur in Mexico City, the local residents have been tackling these challenges head on. This place is called Huerta Roma Verde, which covers an area of nearly 8,000 square meters. It used to be part of a housing estate of several apartment buildings that were destroyed by the major earthquake of 1985. For 27 years, the plot was a wasteland and used by neighbors as a dumping ground for their rubbish. Until a man named Paco, who grew up in the Roma neighborhood, decided to transform the wasteland into a social ecological experiment, which I had the opportunity to go and visit for myself and talk with the chief agricultural coordinator and to learn more about the Mexican technology that they are using. But before entering the waste disposal center, I took a walk through the Mandela Garden. This is where the project originally began and grew organically outwards. In the center is a water collection tower and all around are raised beds. I could see a lot of different crops growing together. Native corns, tomatoes and green leafy vegetables. The produce is sold to the people in the surrounding community. But to grow this food in the first place, 
fertile soil is needed, and it is made right here. From the organic food scraps sent from local restaurants and cafes, the waste is picked up with a tricycle and then managed in a variety of ways. Antonio, the chief agricultural coordinator, shows me the different types of composting methods, from compost coffins to the aerated bins and chambers. Antonio explains within a container you have five parts. Two parts are the food scraps and the other three parts need to be carbon. These can be from decaying natural materials such as coconut fibers, twigs and branches. There's plenty around Roma Verde, due to the fact it's situated under a canopy of trees, creating shade and keeping the community nice and cool from the heat island effect of the surrounding city. Antonio also goes on to explain that they are using microbacteria that is found in the Chiampas that has helped to speed up the process of decomposition and reduce bad odours. They use this bacteria and compost bins with holes, which is known as Chinampero Compostero. The system is cheap and accessible. It has been developed to process the decomposing waste without reaching a putrefaction process. This helps prevent the emissions of greenhouse gases, such as methane and CO2, that can be polluting for the environment. There is also a separate recycling area for non-organic dry waste, such as batteries, plastic lids, and other discarded materials. It is amazing to see how the ancestral sustainable knowledge is being revitalized, and also how the space itself feels extremely healing and healthy. There's even an alternative medicine zone, an amphitheater, natural buildings, and eco-toilets, including a special toilet for women on their menstrual cycles. Even the grey water from the sink is being reused. Huerta Roma Verde is a perfect example of a zero-waste holistic community within a megacity. Just imagine if we dedicated more zones in our local neighbourhoods where we took care of our waste management, but we also used it and transformed the waste into useful materials again that can feed people whilst creating a social and healing space instead of the lunacy of disregarding what we throw out as trash, which we pay for other people to take away and just forget about, whilst polluting our environment further, it's already been proven unsustainable and will only continue to be going forward if we don't decide to make a change today.